Assalamu alaikum my dear students, how are you? Hope all of you are well by the grace of Almighty Allah. Welcome to NI EBS Home School. This is Shada Diyakhtar, Assistant Teacher of Science of National Real English Version School, Jeshit. Today I am going to take a science class for class 8 students. <coughs> my dear students, our today's topic is chapter 6, discussion part 1. Our today's lecture number 13 and SW number 10. My dear students, let's start our class. <coughs> This is chapter 6, the structure of atoms. <coughs> Everything that you see around you is made up of tiny particles called atom. My dear students, <coughs> here, the, uh, here given the definition of atom. What is atom? We know that everything that around us is made up of tiny particles and we call this atom. Atom are far too small to be seen. Yet the scientists have developed ideas about the structure of atom indirectly through <coughs> various experiments and observations. Different particles have different characteristics because they are built by different types of atoms which have different numbers of electrons, uh, protons and neutrons. <coughs> My dear students, now we will discuss about the evolution of idea of atoms and their structure. By now, you have known that all the materials are formed by tiny particles. These particles can stay in two forms. One is called atom, uh, which is the smallest particle, and other is molecule, where more than one atom form a stable structure. So, my dear students, from this topic, we have learned here all the particles, all that all the mat materials are formed of very tiny particles, and these particles can stay in two forms. So one is atom and another is molecule. Atom is <coughs> the smallest particle and a molecule, one or more than atom <coughs> makes a molecule. So about of tiny particles, different scientists and philosophers have expressed different opinions. The Greek philosopher Democritus put forward for the first time in 400 BC the idea that all the matters are formed in tiny particles. My dear students, analyze this slide. Underline this line, Greek philosopher Democritus <coughs> put the first the idea that all matters are formed of tiny particles and according to him, these particles are indivisible. So according to Democritus, these particles are, these tiny particles are indivisible which cannot be divided further. Indivisible means which cannot be divided further and he called it atom. The word atom was chosen by the form uh, <coughs> chosen from the Greek word atomos. My dear students, this is very very important MCQ. The <coughs> atom comes from the word Greek word atomos, which means indivisible. Two of his contemporary philo philosophers, Plato and Aristotle, expressed different opinions. According to Aristotle, matter is continuous, and as such, particles of matter can be divided into smaller and smaller parts with word limits. My dear students, according to Aristotle, <coughs> matter is continuous, as such, particles of matter can be divided into smaller and smaller parts with word limit. So, based on experimental evidence in age. <coughs> In 103, the English scientist John Dalton said that the smallest particle of an element is an atom which cannot be divided any further. So, my dear students, next um, after the uh, after the uh, Aristotle, science, <coughs> English scientist John Dalton said that the smallest particle of an element of an atom which cannot be divided any further. So, Dalton's <coughs> idea got acceptance and the idea of Aristotle was rejected. In fact, atoms are not indivisible and are not the smallest particles of matter. Atoms can be divided. Atoms consist of a small part, smaller particles which are electron, proton and neutron. So my dear students, underline the line and you have to learn properly, you have to memorize properly this one for MCQ and knowledge based question. We have <coughs> from this above discussion we have learn that atom can be divided and atom consists of smaller particles which is electron, proton and neutron. To remove the limitations of the atomic concept of Dalton, <coughs> later others propose alternate models of atom. And out of these models, the most accepted atomic model is the model proposed by Rutherford and Bohr. Rutherford and his co-workers at all states carried out an important <coughs> experiment to find out the correct structure of the atom. 
from the result of uh, experiment rutherford arrived at the conclusion that the whole of the positive charge and ma mass is confined to a small area at the center of the atom this is called nucleus my dear students see the figure here this is the <coughs> this is electron proton and neutron in helium atom this is helium atom so this is called nucleus and nucleus consists of proton and <coughs> neutron and this is the electron uh, orbit electron orbit and electron revolves around this orbit okay around this nucleus so this one is electron and the charge of electron is negative and this one is nucleus here are proton so proton is positive charge and neutron is chargeless and this is called nucleus so ultimately the charge of nucleus is also positive and electron revolve around the nucleus okay so <coughs> now um, <coughs> he also explained that the most of the space in the atom is empty and the negative charge is carried by the electron the space <coughs> between the orbit and nucleus is empty and the <coughs> electron is negative uh, negative charge which have negligible mass and, and revolves around the center central positive charge so rutherford model is similar to the model of the solar system but he did not say anything definitely about the orbit of the electron niels bohr put forward the idea that the negative charge carrying particles revolve in certain alloy orbits he used the quantum theory of Planck's in this model so from the above discussion we can say that the atoms are not indivisible okay well, from above discussion we can say that the atoms are not indivisible atoms are formed by electron proton and neutron and at the center of the atom there is exists the nucleus and in the nucleus there are protons and positive now which is positive charge and neutrons which are chargeless so most of the mass of the atom is concentrated at the nucleus and the space between the electron and nucleus this space is empty okay in fact the most of the space of atom is void <coughs> my dear students i hope all of you have understood this topic now go to next topic um, <coughs> atomic number mass number and mass number and isotopes different elements have different types of uh, atoms for example the atom of hydrogen is different from atom of oxygen and the atom of element of different <coughs> one element is different from other elements in respect of atomic size atomic mass and characteristics why this is difference why is this difference the difference in di behavior of atoms arises from the difference in the number of protons and electrons so in a normal state <coughs> in normal atom is atom the net charge is zero so therefore the number of electron and the number of proton are the same so to explain the behavior of an atom the number of proton is usually used the number of protons in the nucleus of an atom of an element its atomic number so my dear students this is also not important knowledge this question what is atomic number the number of proton in the nucleus of an atom of an element is atomic number and there is only one proton in hydrogen atom and so the atomic number of hydrogen is one and there is eight proton in an oxygen atom so its atomic number is eight so my dear students from this information uh, we can get the atomic uh, atomic number carbon has atomic number six okay carbon has atomic number six so since the atomic number indicates the number of proton the atom of a particular element and the number of protons is equal to the number of electron in each atom so we can understand that carbon atom must have six electrons so is it possible to know how many neutrons are there in atom uh, from its atomic number no it is not possible to know the number of neutrons in an atom from an its atomic number because to know the number of neutrons in the <coughs> in an atom one has to know the atomic number and the mass mass number of atom okay so the, from atomic number we can say that there how many electrons and protons number are there but for to know the uh, number of neutron we have to know the mass number of that atom so the mass of the electron in an atom is negligible most of the mass of an atom is due to the mass of the nucleus again the mass of a 
proton is nearly equal to the mass of a neutron. Okay. Again, again, the mass of new proton is nearly equal to the mass of a neutron. So the mass number of an atom of an element is expressed as the total number of the proton and neutrons in an atom. My dear students, you have to understood this line. The mass number of an atom of an element is expressed as the total number of <coughs> protons and neutrons in an atom. Thus, the mass number of an element is equal to the number of proton in an atom of the element plus the number of neutrons in the atom. For example, <coughs> there are 8 protons and 8 neutrons in an oxygen atom. Okay, there are 8 protons. So, here oxygen, there are <coughs> proton, 8 proton and 8 neutron. Okay. <coughs> So there are the mass number of oxygen is will be mass number of oxygen will be 8 plus 8 right this is it will be 16. So the mass number of oxygen is 16. In case of sodium there are 11 proton and 12 neutron okay. So uh, in sodium that is Na here <coughs> proton is for 11 number of proton and neutron number is 12. So the mass number of neutron will be mass number of neutron will be 11 plus 12 that is 23. My dear students, I hope all of you have understood. So mass number indicates the total number of proton number and neutron number. Okay, so it has been discussed before that if the atomic number and the mass number are known, the number of neutrons of the atom can be found out. So you will see it clearly from the following example. Here given an example. For an element A, the atomic number is 17 and the mass mass number is 5. So find out the number of proton <coughs> and the number of neutron of an atom of that element. So my dear students, now <coughs> here given the atomic number is 17. So we can do this <coughs> problem now. Here given the atomic number here given the atomic number is atomic number is 17 and mass number is 5 <coughs> so find out the number of proton and number of neutron are there what will be the number of <coughs> uh, proton and number of neutron are there so my dear students now we will solve this mathematical problem the atomic number of element a is 17 since the atomic number is uh, equal to the number of proton and number of uh, uh, proton is the atom of number a, uh, element is 17. So again the number of electron is an atom is equal to the proton number so it will be number of 17. So my dear students here proton number is 17 <coughs> here an electron number also 17. So in an atom the number of proton plus the number of neutron so it will be mass number of an atom. So therefore the number of neutron of an atom element A equals to mass number of that element minus the number of proton in an element. So it will be here mass number, mass number is here given 35. Okay. So 35 minus 17 it will be 18. <coughs> so the neutron number of that element will be 18. So like this we have to find out the number of proton number and number of neutron of that atom. My dear students now come to next topic isotope. Already we have learned, uh, come to know that the atom of an element have definite number of proton and electron but an element may have different mass number. So this is because as the atoms of an element may have different number of neutrons. Here <coughs> for example, any hydrogen, every hydrogen atom has one electron and one proton. So most of the hydrogen atom have no neutrons but some hydrogen atoms have one neutron. These atoms have mass number 2 and again some hydrogen atoms have 2 neutrons and its mass number is 3. So these isotopes are shown in figure in this figure here in the, in the same way the different atoms of an element which have the same number of protons and electrons but different mass number are called isotopes. So my dear students here given the <coughs> definition of uh, isotopes okay what is called isotopes that <coughs> what is called isotopes 
the different atoms of an element which have the same number the atoms which have same number of proton and electron but different mass number is called isotopes of that element so from uh, here we uh, can memorize the definition of isotope most of the carbon atoms have six proton and six neutrons in the nuclei so but the same atom have seven or eight neutrons in the nuclei so thus the carbon has three isotopes so my dear students here given the hydrogen isotope the figure of hydrogen isotope here hydrogen has three isotope protium deuterium and tritium okay so this, this is in protium the uh, <coughs> proton number is one neutron num uh, number one and deuterium number two and tritium number three so my dear students i hope all of you have understood our today's topic here given your sw number 10 and <coughs> here given a mathematical problem See, uh, this one is uh, this mathematical problem is your SW that is element B <coughs> and the, here given the element with the atomic number is 7 and mass number is 5. Uh, find out the proton and neutron number of that element. This is your SW. My dear students, uh, see you again in the next class. Allah Hafiz.